Welcome back to Live Now from Fox, and good morning to you if you're just now tuning in. I'm Jeannie Francine, waking up with you on this Sunday morning. It is March 24th. We are following some breaking news at this hour, giving you a live look out there in Gaza, and you can see the Israel Hamas war rages on. Those missile strikes still continuing at this hour. You can see the plumes of smoke there in the distance. According to our content partners over at the Associated Press, Palestinians who fled during an ongoing Israeli raid in and around the Gaza Strip's main hospital described days of heavy fighting, mass arrest, forced marches past dead bodies and flattened buildings during interviews that were conducted on today. The Israeli military saying they have killed over 170 militants and detained some 480 suspects in the raid on Shifa Hospital that began last Monday, portraying it as a heavy blow to Hamas and other armed groups saying they have regrouped in the medical compound. But we're told the heavy fighting has also highlighted the resilience of Palestinian armed groups in an isolated and heavily destroyed part of Gaza where troops have been forced to return after launching a similar raid back in November. We're told that people in that area could actually hear the gunfire and explosions echoing inside of their homes, sometimes causing the whole building to shake. Now, early Saturday, Israeli troops stormed the building and forced them and dozens of other residents to leave. We're being told men were forced to strip to their underwear and four men were detained. The rest were blindfolded in order to follow a tank south as more blasts stuttered around them. So this is the very latest information we are getting on the Israel Hamas war, courtesy of our content partners over at the Associated Press. Um, this is new information we are getting, breaking news at this hour, that the Israeli military has killed over 170 Hamas militants in that Shifa hospital raid. Um, we are told that that is the um, largest hospital in that Gaza area and the last remaining working hospital as well. So as we continue to get more information here on Live Now from Fox, you will be the first to know um, this is an ongoing situation. As we continue to give you the latest information as it relates to the Israel-Hamas war, we know that the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has been out at that Rafah border crossing this weekend on the Egypt side, giving updates as it relates to the war, I want to play that for you now. First of all, it is clear that we have two kinds of obstacles for humanitarian delivery in Gaza. One is the war itself, is the fact that we have attacks, bombardments, killings, and obviously, as the deconflicting mechanisms are not working properly, it is very dangerous to distribute humanitarian aid in Gaza. On top of that, law and order have completely being broken, which means that we have witnessed several situations in which the distribution degenerates into a situation of violence, and also situations in which people were bombed when distribution was taking place. So there is a fundamental question. There is no way to have an effective aid distribution in Gaza without a humanitarian ceasefire. On top of that, we have a number of obstacles, obstacles in relation to, as we have seen, rejection of items, uh, obstacles in relation to uh, the inspections, options in relation to authorizations of convoys, or or obstacles in relation to uh, the uh, situation of the roads and the, the, the different uh, uh, other, uh, uh, I would say, uh, questions that are posed by a constant fighting. Uh, there are a, a number of obstacles that the Israeli authorities have maintained that make it very difficult to reach 
the level of delivery that is necessary. The problem is not how many trucks enter. The problem is how can we distribute even for the trucks that enter in the chaotic situation that was created in Gaza. How about the future of the children? I think that uh, uh, we will, of course, uh, with UNICEF and with other agencies, do our best. Uh, we will have to work uh, with uh, as soon as the, the war ends with the authorities uh, uh, in order to make sure that uh, we mobilize the international community for massive support to the children. First of all, there will be many situations of family reunification that will have to be taken place, but many have lost all their families. Uh, we need to have institutions able to provide them with adequate treatment. Trauma is terrible, so we will need also institutions to deal with that. So it's a huge work that uh, uh, we are totally committed to be part of, together with uh, uh, other institutions, uh, namely the Red Crescent, Red Cross family, and uh, we'll be appealing for uh, international solidarity to allow it to happen as soon as the war ends. So far, uh, Netanyahu has said that he's intent on, on uh, going into Gaza. Sorry, sorry. Netanyahu has said that he's intent on uh, going into Rafah, and uh, whether or not the U.S. is with him. And I wanted to ask, what will the humanitarian situation be if uh, if Israel attacks Rafah? I think there is today a clear consensus consensus press expressed by the United States, consensus expressed by the European Union, consensus expressed by the UN, by the international community as a whole, that uh, a ground uh, intervention in Gaza, uh, in Rafa, with uh, the characteristics that we all know, would be a, a, a humanitarian catastrophe. And so I believe this is time to make sure that what we have been saying since the beginning, a humanitarian ceasefire takes place. At the same time, it's time for hostages to be released. At the same time, it's time to create hope for the Palestinian people that there will be a Palestinian state. But Netanyahu has said that he is intent on going in with or without the US. So how, how, what is a possible way forward to prevent that from happening? I think that we must do everything possible to put pressure for that not to happen. I think the U.S. has uh, there a, a particular capacity. And uh, um, obviously, uh, everyone will assume its responsibilities or his or her responsibility in relation to history. For me, it is clear. We need to avoid a catastrophic situation in Rafa. Uh, Mirat, from Bloomberg. Israel is saying it will move civilians out of Rafah before any offensive. Is that possible to do safely and quickly, given we are talking more than a million people? Well, first of all, we are against any form of forced displacement. And second, there is no safe place in Gaza today. So we consider that it is extremely doubtful any program, any successful program, to provide security and safety for the population of Rafa when that security and safety doesn't exist in the whole of the Gaza territory. Thank you so much. Let's move to uh, this slide. Don uh, Clancy from uh, Fast Blue. Don Thank you, uh, Secretary. What getting aid into Gaza, what, what, what can the UN do, what can you do to guarantee that they'll follow, that, that they'll make that happen? And then I also wanted to ask you, are you frustrated? First of all, uh, don't ask me how I can guarantee that the Israeli government will do whatever, because it is clear that the Israeli government uh, does not normally do what I ask him to do. Uh, what I can say is that it's our interest to mobilize the international community in order to guarantee 
death, uh, if there is a ceasefire, there will be unhindered access to the whole of the territory and the possibility to have a massive distribution to avoid uh, the risk of famine that is today uh, a nightmare for all of us. Uh, the second question was... Are you frustrated? I mean, I just met with um, humanitarian workers that are working in Gaza before the uh, uh, intervention I had. And uh, I remember one of them. He has 25 years of uh, humanitarian work everywhere in the world. He said he has never seen anything so horrendous as the situation that is now occurring in Gaza. You cannot see so many people being killed. You cannot see so many children losing their families. You cannot see such a huge amount of suffering without feeling enormously frustrated because unfortunately we have not the power to stop it. And I appeal to those that have the power to stop it to do it effectively. Do you think today's visit can change uh, Netanyahu positions from going to Rafa? Why don't you ask Prime Minister Netanyahu about that? Okay, about UNRWA, sir. Uh, do you, about allegations that uh, it was involved in uh, attacking Israel. Uh, how do you think about this? Sorry. Allegation against UNRWA. Let's be very clear. UNRWA is the backbone of the assistance in Gaza. 3,000 UNRWA members of staff are the center of the distribution of aid in Gaza. 169 have been killed. And they are going on with an enormous courage, resilience and determination supporting the people in Gaza. This needs to be respected. Of course, there was uh, uh, a serious indication that uh, members of UNRWA were aliciated to participate in uh, the terror attacks. And this, of course, is something that we totally condemn. And immediately, in relation to those that were, uh, in which there was a serious possibility, they were separated, they were terminated uh, in their contracts, and uh, we launched a serious investigation, and at the same time, uh, as you know, I asked uh, uh, Catherine Colonna and a group uh, of uh, uh, Nordic institutes to look into how can the UNRWA be strengthened in order to be able to avoid any Hamas infiltration for any purpose and to guarantee its neutrality in the conflict. We are working hard to make it happen, and I appeal to the whole of the international community to go on supporting UNRWA, because, as I said, UNRWA is the backbone of the humanitarian aid inside Gaza. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, over there, there Thank you, Your Excellency. Uh, no, excellency is not necessary. <laughs> uh, my question is connected to the tragic incident that took place uh, in my country. I'm from Task News Agency, and in my country, in Moscow, uh, there was a tragic uh, incident terrorist attack, and uh, we don't know yet uh, who organized it, but there are controversial information that it could be ISIS. Uh, in your opinion, uh, how is uh, right now the ISIS? Um, how uh, how is right now ISIS? Um, is it dangerous for the Middle East for the world? Uh, is it possible to uh, regenerate and to become and, and to threaten the world again? Thank you. ISIS is a terrorist organization that is operating in several parts of the world and it is a very serious threat to us all. Uh, we firmly condemn 
we can see the absolutely intolerable, the attack that took place in Moscow. Uh, and uh, we encourage all countries to cooperate with each other in order to make sure that ISIS will not have the capacity to strike again anywhere else in the world. ISIS is a terrorist organization that needs to be fought with determination, with a lot of international cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank you.